Hey. I do recommend right when you walk through like doorways, gates, things like that, there's gonna be a lot of people right there. Just to uh, walk a little bit down the path or whatever and you'll be able to kind of avoid the people, get your own shots without the people. I say that as I walk by a cubby hole with 100 people shoved into it. I really could just stay up here and look at this all day though. Which you kind of can because they don't kick you out. I'm actually thinking this might be one of the ones I try to get a shot to turn into a poster on my wall. Good morning for my last morning in Rome. I do mean last morning because I'm kind of an idiot and I booked a 6 a.m. flight. There's no trains, no nothing like that running until 6 a.m. and obviously I have to be at the airport a few hours early. Don't do what I did, get a flight out at like noon-ish. But today I got my uh, booking to get into the Colosseum at 9.15, so I'm heading out now to head that way. Let's head out. Okay, got myself my first uh, double shot of espresso to start the day. My experience so far is that the espresso is not as good up in Rome. I think uh, the South does coffee a little bit better than the North does. Sorry, Italy. Since the uh, cat ruins are between my place I'm staying and the, the Colosseum, I figured I would briefly stop here and say hi to the cats and see if any of them will let me scratch their little heads. Hey. 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 What? One of them has decided I am worthy and he let me love on him a little bit. A, a very little bit. It was it was a brief brief rubbing, and then it was like, nope, that had it. Found some more of them ruins that you just stumble upon when you're walking around. I hadn't stumbled upon these ones yet. No idea what it is. There's absolutely no signs anywhere that say. It's crazy to me that this gigantic building here behind me is actually a modern building. Building like the 1800s, and uh. Pretty sure the Romans would be happy with that one here, back in their time. The designer of that one did a good job. I'm really trying to push it, make it to the uh, Colosseum on time, because I keep stopping to take photos since uh, it's still only uh, about nine o'clock and there's just not a lot of people out yet. Uh, I'm not gonna be given any type of like history lesson while I'm walking through here because I'm not a historian, nor am I a tour guide, and anything I said would probably be incorrect. Uh, I do have an audio guide on my phone, which I will probably find a spot up at the top and out, out of everybody's way and just sit there and listen to it. Because there is a lot of people in here. I think the sign back there said it's limited to like 2,000 at a time or something like that. So it's a lot of people and uh, all of them huddle around the first site you get to see, the first like overlook. This place is, is honestly just incredible. I don't think it's going to hit me like it did last time, my first time here. And you really cannot come to Rome and not come here. Especially just for 15 euro, or 18 euro. It would be so incredible to get to see the Colosseum like that, like I was saying yesterday with all of the statues still in it. I really wish that they some recreations or something like that in these windows because it would just be incredible to see that when you're walking around. Not that it isn't incredible already. When I was uh, coming in here, I read the sign on like what you uh, I could and couldn't do or bring in or whatever. And uh, some of it made obvious sense, but other things I was like, why? Apparently you can't bring selfie sticks, but I don't think this little tripod thing I have counts. You can't have those 3D augmented reality glasses, which I really don't understand the reasoning for that. What they got, I like was a mind the cat, or a feral cat colony. Leave them alone, basically is what it said. I do recommend right when you walk through, like doorways, gates, things like that. There's gonna be a lot of people right there. Just uh, walk a little bit down the path or whatever and you'll be able to kind of avoid the people, get your own shots without the people. I say that as I walk by a cubby hole with 100 people shoved into it. I do love they have the underneath area exposed down there so you can see where the animals were kept, the gladiators who were gonna be executed and whatnot before they were being brought up for their show all that would have been covered and hidden from the audience like that it doesn't seem like it 
but that uh, Circus Maximus that I showed you guys yesterday could fit, I think almost double the amount of spectators that this could fit. And as like, as tall as this goes, I mean, this was huge. I mean, it was a story so tall. Circus Maximus wasn't anywhere near as tall. It was just, it was so long and spread out that they were able to fit more people in. Now, I don't know. I assume that was also free to go. Oh my God, my hair. I assume the uh, Circus Maximus was also free to go to just like this, since it was used as a, a way of keeping the people entertained. I really could just stay up here and look at this all day now, which you kind of can because they don't kick you out. Once, you, once you're in, you're kind of in. You could, you could take your time. So now I do know if you want to really see, like thoroughly see this place, you want to go like down to the underneath area and stuff like that. You do need to book some form of tour because there are a lot of areas you can't go with just the, the standard uh, entrance. So if this is your first time coming here, I do kind of recommend doing something like that just so you can more thoroughly see this place. Since I've done that, I'm not doing it again, but I'm walking in the shop now, so I'm gonna stop the course. Yeah, definitely not the same uh, emotional feeling I felt on the first go, but uh, I am still very glad that I went because it is, it is pretty incredible in there. So one thing about Rome that has actually quite surprised me. It's to a point now that Rome has actually been the most expensive city that I have been on on this trip, which is not what I would have expected. Like things like food, water, entrance to things, absolutely everything has been significantly more expensive than even on the Amalfi Coast. Uh, so though you can get rooms for very cheap here in comparison with down there, your actually actual day-to-day -day expenses especially if you're going to sites like this and stuff is going to be a lot more here in rome so if you are on a budget maybe stay away from rome but it can still be done pretty cheaply as i showed yesterday there's so much to see for free like i, I don't plan to spend anything else on sites today everything else i'm going to be doing is free i'm looking at the cabs over here since i know that's how i'm gonna to have to get to the airport tomorrow it is a uh, Luckily, one of those places that has a fixed pricing to and from the airport. Uh, I know a lot of major cities do that now. The thing that sucks is that fixed pricing is 50 euros. So you're not going to get ripped off by someone trying to charge you 100. But at the same time, it is 50 euros. But I guess it's my only option unless I want to walk a couple hours. I have no idea what this building I just stumbled into is. But holy crap. I think it's some form of theater. Because I saw the word theater outside on the sign. But Jesus Christ, guys. I don't know how well that's uh, coming through. But Jesus. That place was beautiful. And I still have no uh, idea where I'm heading. I haven't even looked at the map since I left the Coliseum. I'm just walking. Look at this car. I want that little thing. That is so me. I'm only buying things that I'm using to decorate my apartment for rental. And it obviously needs some form of calendar. And last time I was in Rome, I got one of these. And this time I got one of these. It got to the room. Wanted to let y'all know ATM fees and such here. Uh, I tried a few of them just to compare. And they all seem to be right around four euros for uh, the actual transaction fee. But then they have a conversion fee on top of that. The conversion fee is uh, like converting from USD to Euro. And their conversion rate was absolutely horrible. And uh, I clicked decline on the conversion, but it still processes. So I don't know how that works. I don't know if my bank then decides the conversion rate. I guess I will find out when I look at my bank statement. But yeah, I don't know why the ATMs here have like the worst conversion rates I've ever seen on my walk around heading towards other potential Bernini uh, fountains, assuming I make it to them. I walk by the Chevy Fountain again, which is just absolutely breathtaking. But it is not uh, running now, so I'm glad I uh, walked by when I did it earlier because I got to see it actually uh, functioning. But that was also potentially going to be a Bernini fountain. He was commissioned to, uh, to design and draw it. And 
for renovations, but uh, it never happened from him. Uh, just some of the concept. And some of the concept did carry over into the fountain, and you can tell by the Baroque gorgeous architecture. But uh, there's some of that gelato I was talking about do not get, because the mound is like twice as high as the pan itself. But uh, man, that Trevi fountain is absolutely stunning. I don't know what the times they run it or whatever it are, but uh, definitely, definitely walk by that. Even with the crowds, you, you'll be able to get a break and you can get up there and admire it yourself. Okay, now this is the reason I walked out here. To show you guys one of Bernini's absolutely incredible freaking fountains. I am not going to attempt to pronounce the name of it. It's kind of far out of the way of like the main tourist sites here. It's just absolutely stunning. I'm actually thinking this might be one of the ones I try to get a shot to turn into a poster on my wall. This phone has an absolutely ridiculous 108 megapixel main camera. But with all the background stuff on this one, I don't know if it'll actually be making a good poster without a lot of work to remove the people and whatnot. Um, now supposedly this direction is another Bernini one. So I'm gonna try to figure out where that one is and I'll show you guys it as soon as I find it. Well, here it is, but it's mildly depressing right now because it's got this, uh, it's all roped off from the pol by the police or something. But it is right across from that beautiful one over there. And this is the Fountain of the Bees. The bees right there. But this was another Bernini one. And the bees are obviously uh, pretty worn down. So it looks nothing like, so it looks absolutely nothing like the absolutely beautiful one over there. I'm not really sure why it's all uh, roped off like that at the moment. Jesus. Okay, so I have no idea what was going on back there, but there were hundreds of police down that road where the, where the fountains started, and that was why it was start, partially roped off. You were allowed to pass through, but they scolded me and asked me to not record. Um, and then once I was about halfway down the road, it looked like there was a sort of protest or something like that that was about to happen. So I have no idea what it was for. So as I'm making my way from the Fountain of the Bees to another fountain that's supposed to be up this way, uh, I passed a place that looks like I might be able to get a COVID test. So I'm going to pop in real quick and see if that is a possibility so that I don't have to deal with that at the airport tomorrow. I am getting a rapid COVID test here. It was a 22 euro, so it's technically $2 more than at the airport. But like I said, I'm flying out so freaking early tomorrow, I don't want to have to deal with it tomorrow. So if I can have it done and have that peace of mind, it's, it's worth the two euros for it. So I'm not gonna film them shoving the thing up my nose because I don't feel like trying to ask them if that's okay. And I think y'all at this point know what it looks like to have a cotton swab, cotton swab shoved up your nose. Oh, my eyes are watering so much. She like touched my brain on that one. That was the most uh, vigorous one I've gotten yet. Oh, oh. Now fingers crossed, 10 minutes. I am allowed to fly home. So I am not into cars, but I'm sure some of y'all are. And I was walking by a Lamborghini store. And as much as I am not into cars, I do gotta say that them are some sexy gas hog vehicles. I don't know why I kept saying uh, fountain. It was not a fountain. Um, there's a Bernini sculpture in this church, which it appears is closed which is a freaking shame because it is supposed to be one of his masterpieces uh okay i got my first coffee cafe in rome that i've actually really liked and it's comparable to some of the ones i got down south however it's a cafe latte it's not just an espresso so if you get a cafe latte in rome they're pretty darn good i have no, just no, got to no, walk no, by this no. every freaking chance i get because it is so beautiful even with all the crowds. And I am very much enjoying my cafe latte. But you can see how uh, incredibly crowded it is down here around the Trevi Fountain. Even all the restaurants and stuff. Prices are similar here to what I had around the Coliseum. I got myself a wee little bit of pasta. I wanted to do, get a small meal so I could potentially get some gelato later. And I'm not going to be filming here because this is a super busy walking street. That meal wasn't too expensive, it was uh, 15 50 euro. Uh, so, not too bad. Uh, a lot cheaper than the one we had by the Coliseum. 
but I think I'm gonna try to cram some of this delicious looking gelato in me now. I'm currently walking by the Pantheon and they are finishing up setting up for a concert and uh, I have said numerous times how much I would love to see one perform at a uh, at one of these sites or in one of the theaters. And I just asked the guy, and he said it's at seven o'clock tonight. If I'm able to, I think I'm definitely going to uh, try to make it out to this, at least for a little bit. It's not too far from my place, but I'm sure there's going to be even more people than are currently packed into here. Rome, you need more freaking trash cans. I've been walking around with this for like five minutes at least. Just looking on every corner and everywhere for trash cans. It wasn't until I got to this plaza with the beautiful, beautiful Bernini fountain that I found any trash cans at all. I mean, not that I'm complaining, I wanted to look at this fountain one more time before I left anywhere. Good God, it's so beautiful. I actually think I want to do the uh, 100 megapixel photo here. I think with that backdrop and everything, that might end up being made into one of my posters. But we will have to see. I've been trying to regularly glance at menus just to uh, compare prices around. And I will say, truthfully, the prices are not any different if you hop like a couple blocks off of one of the plazas with the sites versus the plazas. So. I mean, I don't know if the restaurants are any different or better or worse, but I would say that it is probably worth paying the maybe one or two euros more that you might pay for the views that you get at some of the sites. That's up to you. And those tables obviously fill up quick. But if you can't get a table there, if you just curve down any of the alleyways off of any of those main attractions, you're gonna just find table after table after table. I arrived earlier than I expected so that I could wait for the show to start. It's, it's just finishing up now, setting up. It should start in about five or 10 minutes. But they ran out of tables at this restaurant and the speed at which they build new tables in the plaza is pretty hilarious. Well, I have uh, sat down and eaten at that restaurant for well over an hour at this point. It uh, was the second most expensive meal I've had on this trip, and it was not good enough to warrant that. Um, I apologize to the people there. Uh, I think there's a translation error when they talk about what cut of meat it was because it was called a filet and it was most certainly not a filet because a good filet will just melt in your mouth and that had so much gristle on it that there's just no way that that was a filet cut and I would not have had an issue paying that much for a filet but it was not that and the potatoes drastically outshined the filet but on top of that, after waiting over 45 minutes after when I was told this show was going to start, it still has not started and there is no sign of it actually starting. So I have to leave too early in the morning to wait for it to, uh, wait for it to start. But when I talked to the guy at the restaurant, it apparently I think is a like a model show like a runway type of show with music which is cool and all but uh i'm uh i'm not into models and runway shows and stuff like that so i called in the night after spending way too much money on that food and uh i'm heading back to my room oh it's so depressing that this is uh this is the end of the trip but it is what it is. Ah, I thought of one more bill-related issue with that place. I, obviously, I've eaten out every single meal on this trip. And service fees are just part of it when you are eating at a restaurant or eating outside. 
you can expect to spend 150 to 2 euro uh, service fee, and that's standard. However, when I got that bill, it was a 15% service fee. So it was not a fixed amount, it was a percentage amount, um, which on that kind of food is quite high. Uh, so my service fee for that meal ended up being four times the service fee that I paid on any meal at all on this trip. So, yet again, it's further reinforcing my statements earlier that Rome has become an expensive place to travel. Uh, you can obviously do it cheaper. You can go to little panini places and get paninis and pastries and things like that. But even there, you're going to be paying two to three times what you would be paying in uh, Napoli or even on parts of the Amalfi Coast, which is kind of crazy to me. Uh, I still love Rome, and I will still be back here, but definitely come prepared to spend some money. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow uh, when I pay the 50 euro fee to get a cab to uh, the airport. So uh, until then, please like, comment, subscribe down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, one more statement to anybody vlogging. Always make sure you are walking in the correct direction when you start your vlog. Otherwise, by the time you end it, you've already walked two or three minutes in the opposite direction like I just did. I'm an idiot. I just dropped my phone and mic. I'm testing the mic out. Okay, I've officially spent too much money because I got some of the ceramics. I got, a, I got one earlier that was like a cheaper China one, which was like a Colosseum. And then I got two mask-like ones, which are going to go basically the Coliseum one above and then the mask ones beside the door entry into my home theater. I feel like, I feel like they'll be fitting, but uh, I'm justifying it by not including this cost in the vacation cost, and I'm including this in my house uh, renovation cost. So that's how I'm justifying this purchase. While I wait for my COVID results, I'm going to give a shoe review. Pre-trip, I bought these. They are the La Sportiva um, ones, and I can't remember the actual like model. They are nice, they are comfortable, I did break them in a bit before the trip. Um, but after almost two weeks of pretty much constant walking, I can say that they do require an, in an insert. Um, the bottoms of my feet are yelling at me at this point, and that's fine, like I think everybody's feet are different, so you may or may not need them. But there's one major negative that I think would be a, uh, a non-selling point for a lot of people. As uh, good as they do seem to hold up, they have been good on like rocks and dirt and things like that. If the rocks are even slightly wet, like when it starts to drizzle, there's absolutely no traction. These shoes have zero traction on stone or rock that is wet. So keep that in mind if you're looking for these. I may, might end up looking for another pair before I hit the road with my cat because I don't know if I want a shoe that is waterproof but yet slippery.